His full names were Nick, uh, Ki, Kipiator Nicholas Kiprono Arab Biwot. I remember one time during my special inspector's course in 1988, during morning quiz, I was the only one who got it right. So Mr. Kimeli uh, repeated it again and asked who is the Minister for Regional Development. Nobody knew. When I raised my hand, he said, they come and tell us because you are the only one who got it right. I stood up. I said, uh, Kipiator, Nicholas, Kiprono, Arab, Biwot. Everybody was shocked. And Mr. Bernard Kimei Kimeli said, uh, this fellow must be related to him. Yes, I could relate to him because three years before, that is around 1985 and early 86, uh, there were two incidences in Sigor that, con that related me to Mr. Biwot. But before I come to that, because this step is specifically on my relationship, the Biwot I knew. Uh, Biwot contested the 1974 elections and failed. And then in 1978, Moi became the president. And in 1979, we had a general election. Uh, during uh, Jomo Kenyatta's time and Daniel Arab Moi's time, there used to be uh, district delegations which would visit him at State House, would visit the president at State House. Uh, so one time when uh, the Elegeo Maraquet team went to visit uh, Moi, you know Moi being the president, he was to be the last person to speak. Uh, then uh, he called the he called the MP and the Biwot, said the two of you come. They went to where he was standing and he thanked them both for agreeing that the then MP was stepping down for Biwot. Uh, that was the first time the MP was hearing, but you know he could not say it before the president, especially those days. The, the, the Mother Karua had later walked out of the president, but those days one could not even imagine answering back the president. So that is how Biwot ended up in parliament. Uh, in, uh, that was uh, the first handshake that uh, <laughs> the last one maybe was uh, Raila Uhuru. Uh, I noticed uh, Biwot when uh, there were three ministers of state in the office of the president. Actually, during mid-60s, 65, 66, the office of the president had uh, two or three ministers of state. There was uh, Bio Koinange, Akin Kothek, and uh, maybe or maybe not another person. So f when Akin Kothek died, there only remained one minister of state. Uh, later on, when Kibaki took over and Wamalo Kijana became uh, the vice president, we even had a minister of state in the office of the vice president. But mostly minister of state was in the president's office. So we had Kalweo, we had Biwot and, uh, Sambu, and Gigi Karioki. There were three ministers of state. So they, I got a lot of interest in them, especially Biwot being of the same tribe with the, the president. I do remember, uh, now I'm back to my relationship with Biwot. In 1985, there are two things that happened that connected me to Biwot. Uh, the first one was, uh, there was a rumor. You know, I was the intelligence officer in Sigor. There was a rumor that uh, Biwot was conducting himself into poaching. I even wrote a lot of reports, intelligence reports to headquarters, and headquarters had even organized 
that one day we make uh, an ambush so that we, uh, if, if Biwot is arrested red-handedly, we don't have to fear the president. As we were organizing that, I then went on leave, my annual leave. So those who continued, continued. But unfortunately, I think the whole thing crumbled because of when I left for, or for leave, those who, the, the intelligence officer who came to take off, to act in my place and others organized that uh, the list should be amended to say that I was with Biwot and others and the Nasalot game warden who was a Kisi by tribe that we had organized for uh, poaching with uh, Biwot. You see, when you start doubting the investigators, the investigations go wrong. So when I came back from leave, I later came to understand that uh, actually a roadblock had, that there were information which had come that I had, uh, we were, me and uh, Biwot, we, we had a, a vehicle which had uh, trophies in it and we were to be arrested. Imagine a roadblock being uh, mounted in ta around Takwell Gorge and I'm um, hundreds of kilometers at home. Uh, I do believe there was poaching, but uh, when people came and started putting on even the investigators, that is how the story ended. The second chance I had with Biwot, uh, when I was at Sigor, because I later met him in uh, El Geo Maraquet when I was at a higher level, uh, the second one was to do with Takwell Gorge. Uh, I remember there was a plane that was brought by KVDA, of which uh, Biwot and Ouko were passengers. And uh, they came, they were in the vehicle, I mean in the plane, and we took a picture. But the photographer demanded a lot of money that we all refused to pay him. Because if you take a photograph with one negative and two copies, let's say you pay 20 shillings. And then here is somebody who is saying that for you to get just a copy, you have to pay 30 shillings. And uh, you know, we were so many people, so we, we all refused and uh, he went, Alienda Sara. So uh, we, there was that problem with the uh, Takwell Gorge. One day I'll talk about it in detail. But uh, the money for Takwell Gorge was used for the money which was supposed to construct Sondu Miriu and Nabuyole Falls in Webuye were taken to, to Takwell Gorge. We sat in that meeting where the game department, which nowadays is called KWS, did not want it to be there. I'll talk to that uh, on another occasion. But um, KVDA through Biwot forced the Takwell Gorge project to be there. Uh, that is how I came to know about uh, Biwot. And uh, it was funny that when I had resumed the, the back to the story of poaching, uh, Harrison Maina Gwandar, who was the OCS uh, cigar, one time when we were drunk, he challenged me and said I was a stupid person and that I had been given 100,000 shillings to keep quiet on concerning matters concerning uh, a poaching and I looked at him and said sir leave alone this story that you are hearing Mimi at a hundred thousand I'll not even request for more so that was my first uh, meeting with uh, that is how I was related to if I could say be what uh, back to his names Kipiator you know, many, many Kenyans, you have a Christian name, then uh, two vernacular names. But uh, Biwot had four. The first one was uh, vernacular, then Nicholas, then two vernacular. There are people who are called Yator and Kipiator, but also Kipiator means Kiongozi. So he changed his name deliberately to say that um, he was... Uh, Akiongozi. Uh, he he became he differed with Ouko a lot because both of them the president relied on them. But the difference between Biwot and Ouko 
was that Biwot used to tell the president what he, he felt the president wanted to hear. And Ouko used to tell the president what he felt the president needed to hear. So they, they had that difference. They had the difference of uh, Sondu Miriu money building, together with, of course, Webuye money building uh, Takuel Gorge. They had the differences in uh, molasses plant. So that is how they came to be so much uh, enemies. And uh, <clears throat> that is why, and you know, Moi those days had a paranoia. Especially if you call him aside and say, Unaona hii, natendeka hivyo, okay. Unaona hii, two plus two is four, yeah. I says, okay. So, there was the US trip, uh, which uh, Biwot, uh, which Ouko was against, but Biwot was four. So when they went there, in the American system, the most important person is a head of state, then they recognize the head of government, then the third person is the head of, of foreign affairs minister. Uh, so, when they went there, because Biwot was the Minister for Foreign Affairs, he was given preferential, and that one annoyed Biwot. And uh, there was a plan that, uh, I'll talk to that, I'll, I'll, I'll talk on that later, but there was a, a president wanted to talk to the American president, but the American president insisted that the Minister for Foreign Affairs, who is Biwot, should come and uh, explain. So that is when Nani said, you see, the foreigners want to overthrow you. When they came back, uh, Ouko was not sacked. Yeah, people say that Ouko was sacked. Ouko was not sacked. Uh, Ouko was uh, given a free time to go home, uh, to meet his family, to meet his constituents. And then a few days later, he was to fly out of the country. So I want to explain why on that day, there was no they were all, people were out of job. I mean, Biwot was literally alone in the compound. You know, Biwot knew that uh, the Moi didn't want him, so he organized with the Luo leaders to see the president. But uh, the Luo leaders insisted that they'll come alone. Uh, they'll come to see him at night, and they insisted that no witnesses should be there, because the special branch would get information from his employees. Uh, as to who visited. So it is uh, Ouko who voluntarily gave his people off. Selina, and, and you know these people had worked for several months without pay. You know, working for a minister, you get all the food, he pays the fees for your kids and whatever. So when the salary comes, that is like an arrears. And uh, all of them left. Selina decided to make a party, and that is why she had what was her, the commotion. When she had the commotion, uh, Biwot came out expecting to see, uh, he, he expected to meet uh, Oyugi, Anguka, and the rest. But coming out, he saw GSU people in a Land Rover. So when he tried to run away, uh, they ran and touched Koti. And uh, when he tried to shout, they held his, uh, his throat. And that is when he made a noise and Selina joked, you know, she, 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 she didn't know that her, 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 her boss was in danger. So she said that Mualimu has made a noise like that one of a goat when it's about to be slaughtered. So Ouko was placed in a, in a car boot and the vehicle went up to Kericho. Upon reaching Kericho, uh, Biwot, uh, upon reaching Kericho, Biwot kicked, uh, not Biwot, Ouko kicked the boot of the vehicle and the petrol attendant saw Biwot there. And then a pistol was placed in his ear. He was told, So the vehicle, the vehicles were all filled with fuel and they left between Kericho and Nakuru. Somewhere in a forest, the vehicles were stopped and the Ouko was taken out and told Ulko nafanya nini apo petro station that is when his leg was, legs were broken then he was taken to state house and state house he was being interrogated when he was being interrogated the interrogators were Biwot was standing on, one, on, on, on his side and Moi was ahead of him and he was made to kneel 
Now with a broken leg and kneeling, it's very painful. So uh, what was wanted about him was that he was only supposed to uh, accept, confess that he wanted to overthrow the president and apologize. But he was shedding tears and telling Muse, I am the last person who can ever think of overthrowing you. Then in a fake anger, Biwot took out a pistol and shot him. You see, shooting of a pistol, so I studied uh, uh, suicide with guns, especially among police officers. There are various things you do. First of all, you look at the person who has died. Was he a left-handed or a right-handed? Now, if the, if the shooting was done from the side of the hand, if he's a left-handed, the shooting should come from the left. Uh, a a left-handed cannot shoot himself from the right. So, first of all, you, you see the, the direction. And then, in most cases, people are shooting themselves. They shoot themselves down here. Then they shoot, come somewhere up. Or they shoot themselves parallel to the ground. But uh, for someone to be shot from the other side of the hand, if you are right-handed and you are shot from the left, and you are shot by here, and the bullet comes out from here. Uh, <laughs> so that is when uh, Biwot apologized to Moy. You can remember when Kanu was uh, deciding that Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta would be the presidential candidate. Uh, when Biwot wanted to talk, Moy said, you are, <laughs> you, are, you are a criminal. In fact, you, you are supposed, that is one, one of, maybe there are others, but that is one of the issues that he knew, that you had already killed somebody and had used my powers to protect you. Uh, that is when he was shot at State House. Uh, later, later on, I was posted to Iten as the Deputy uh, District Intelligence Officer. Uh, one time I attended an Arambe at uh, Chebara. Uh, the the Biwot had been uh, had stepped aside, or he had been relieved. Actually, the language was he had been relieved of his duty because of the Uko case. Uh, his ministry had been taken over by Francis Ole Kaparo. So we were having that Arambe. We are continuing so well. Ole Kaparo as a minister came. He was invited by Paul Chepcock. Uh, he was invited by Paul Chepcock to, to address. As he was addressing, suddenly Biwot came, a backbencher. You know, Paul Ruto Chepcock was an assistant minister. And uh, Ole Kaparo was a minister. But suddenly, a backbencher in the name of Biwot came. And... Uh, Chepkok came and took out, took the the microphone from Biwot, from uh, Ole Kaparo and announced that the chairman, the the Kanu chairman, the Kanu branch chairman is coming. Can we all stand up and clap? And uh, uh, Ole, Ka, Ole Kaparo stood uh, meekly and. Uh, Biwot went to the microphone straight and uh, and and uh, thanked the. Uh, Said, Unajua wakati nilisimamishwa kazi, huindi alipewa wizara yangu, mpigeni makofi. So he, he overshadowed everybody. I am the one who said that Biwot shot Uko at State House. And uh, sometimes you talk something, people say you are tribal. If you want to murder somebody, don't murder a luo. It is believed that Uko in his court there were some things which were placed there and uh, after after Biwo, after Ouko was buried Biwot developed a very big paranoia he could leave Eldoret and come to Nairobi using up to seven different vehicles and <laughs> nobody ever knew where the other vehicle was he would leave Eldoret there is a petrol station at the junction which goes towards Elda Maravin. Uh, you find that uh, at that petrol station is where he used to meet people, talk, maybe give them some money. And then when they are given money, he takes off with the first vehicle. Somewhere at Burnt Forest, the vehicle, he's told stop. 
So this man goes as if he's going to a shop. Behind the shop, there is another vehicle waiting. This driver will stay until night and so he'll exchange the vehicles that way. He even had a problem that uh, in, 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 in any gathering, you know, he, he, he was supposed to stay in the VIP tent or something, but he would not eat there. He used to believe that uh, somebody would poison him. This paranoia was not there before Oko died, but came after Oko died. So you'd find that when there is a public meeting, he would uh, just dash to where we ordinary people are lining up. He lines up between us, talks, uh, and then uh, he waits until when you are given food, he grabs that food and goes with it, because that is a random food, which he knew that. Then there was also an incident along Gitanga Road, where uh, his daughter, the permanent secretary was staying and she was being guarded by so this fellow instead of getting through the main good door he tried to uh, breach the the fence and the APs nearly shot him thinking that it was a crook who was trying to enter into a permanent secretary's office uh, of course they advised her but she could not advise her father uh, when he died when Biwot, you know, talking about Biwot, we are already in 22nd minute of this recording, but uh, I've even just scratched the, the top. Uh, Biwot, you can even talk 10 times what I've talked today. Uh, when he died, that is when Moi said he didn't even know where Biwot stayed. And that is the first and last time when it was said that uh, Biwot stays here and there. Otherwise, nobody, even his closest friend, ever knew where Biwot was. Uh, lastly, uh, Biwot is a very good example where the Bible says, why should you win the whole world and lose your soul? Amen.